coming from Africa, I came here to better my life. And I feel like personally, we need to stop using the word racism to when we don't get something or when something don't go our way. And just so let me jump trying. in real quick. No disrespect, but racism exists and I have to acknowledge it. And I can't just ignore it, but what I can do is not buy into the system. Okay, I like that. Step forward if you agree. Slavery affected my family. Um, yeah, I mean, that's just evident in my last name, King. I mean, that's the brand of the slave owner that put that name on my family all those years ago, and I'm still wearing it in those ways, along with the compounded, you know, economic disparity, social disparity, mental trauma, all of that. I mean, it's, in, it's, it's tethered forever. So to go back to slavery and talk about post-traumatic stress disorder, um, it has never stopped. So there is no post. What my great grandparents were teaching my grandparents who taught my mother who taught me came from what they learned through slavery so there's a lot of fear a lot of insecurity a fear of society a fear of law enforcement so slavery has made a major impact where the low self-esteem is consistently reoccurring i think for me growing up in los angeles california in the early 1960s, there was a stereotype that I didn't want to be black, I didn't want to be African because we come from Africa or we're slaves. So I want to be a Chinese boy, I want to be Bruce Lee. Um, so growing up like that, I, I didn't like myself and who I was, I didn't like the color of my skin or the way that I spoke. So I emulated other people, I wanted to be something that I was not. It's very saddening when you can literally only go back a couple generations and then it's like, the documents just don't exist. There's no record. It's like, you know, my family has completely been erased. In that same point too, in the time that we've been here, we've created an incredible culture. And we have so many things to be proud of. And I always reframe the narrative myself. And I speak of my ancestors that were enslaved as, you know, doctors and healers. And it's like, the, you know, we were taken because we were talented. Right. You know, because we had skills to offer. And we built this country so and still still building and still building and that's <laughs> something to take pride in so can the disagree a step forward slavery didn't affect my see see i'm not gonna say nothing yet because I, I i sometimes realize when i watch videos like this i get too ahead of myself then i start talking crazy and then like you know what i'm saying it's like they end up saying things that i was already saying so i'm just gonna let everybody talk and then i'm get my point of view on the situation and the things that i'm thinking right now but i'm gonna just let the africans okay the africans talk that's what i'm gonna do my family but we did but we did suffer a different type of slavery back home like we went through colonization like i i am bamileke there was a, a massacre of bamileke you guys can like, look it up they killed like more than three hundred thousand of my people because we didn't want to assimilate to, to the French culture. But it's still nothing compared to what you guys' ancestor like been through, you know? I wouldn't want to minimize that pain, though. What yeah. you just said hurt me, that 300,000 people were, were killed because they would not conform to the colonization of the French people. So that is just as painful and hurtful as the, the trauma that we suffered here in America. I can't share the same experience that you have went through and your family. Even though we also had our own type of slavery, we had apartheid at the time, you know, mm -hmm. where the Dutch people took over and they wanted to just have South Africa, Namibia, and I think other countries where we could only just speak Dutch. It's somehow still happening even now. There's like a place in South Africa where it's called Orania, you know, and it's just Dutch people there. No black person is even allowed there. So we still somehow feel that oppression even now, but it's nothing compared to what your ancestral history, you know, has gone through. I'm somehow happy that you guys have forgiven it, even though you haven't forgotten it. Have you forgiven it? I <laughs> like your face like me. <laughs> but me personally, no, I haven't. Um, but I want to work through the change. But no, I have not forgiven because it's a system that's still going on. And from what I'm hearing from you guys, there's a system that's still going on in Africa as well. And it's, uh, it's a war on us. Racism is the main cause of poverty among black people in America.
Racism is a very big issue that, talking about it, I'm really trying to be careful to not like say anything that will be insensitive. If opportunity is right here, they will give it to people of other race than African American and Africans too. So if there's a job that maybe have math requirement, I feel like they'll pick an Asian person or they believe, oh, African Americans will not dress appropriate. So they will pick another person. They will always like pick people that are not black over people that are black. And I also think, um, I think the crucial like missing point when we talk about- See, when it comes to jobs and things like that, me personally, I don't think, now, I don't, me, I don't think that's true. The reason why is because I feel like if you have all the credentials, if you have all the, the documents and everything to show that you're fit for the job, no matter what your skin color is, I believe you still can get the job. You know what I'm saying? But again, I believe that it's always based off first impressions too. You know what I'm saying? So like, I don't know if you ever heard to, well, y'all pretty, y'all probably did hear the saying, but first impressions are everything. So I feel like if you come in in there and you don't even look presentable for the job, they may not get you, give you the job, whether you're black, white, whatever. You know what I'm saying? You can have, you can have a white guy who come in there sagging his pants, probably got, you know, just probably look terrible, you know, but then think they're going to get the job. They're not going to pick that guy, but then you may have a black guy who come in there professional, got a turtleneck, no earrings and no tattoos. It's like, yes, you have to change up your appearance at times if you want a, a higher level in the job. I'm going to be honest. There's a lot of jobs that I went to that I just did not wear, uh, I didn't wear earrings. I didn't, um. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I, I made sure I look professional. I made sure I look well fit. I covered up all my tattoos. That's why I don't get necks. I don't get no neck tattoos and I don't get any hand tattoos. Why? Because if I was to go for a job that, that, you know, that's like a higher level, I don't want them to look at my tattoos and think that I'm this hood guy when I'm not, you know what I'm saying? You can call it, you can say, well, isn't that discriminating this and that, but I feel like they would do that for a white guy or a Hispanic guy or whoever looks like they're not presentable for the job. Simple as that. So I, I still think that I believe that you can get a job no matter what race you are. Living in America is a lot of black successful people who are in some top companies who are CEOs right now. They got to a CEO position for a reason. You know what I'm saying? They got there. They got to that level for a reason. So I believe that you can get whatever job you want in America uh, being black. You have to put in the work and you have to look presentable for that job. They're not going to hire you if you look like a thug. I'm going to be real. They're not. You got tattoos all on your neck. You got all. They're not going to hire you, bro. If you apply to a company, bro, come on now. You got to look professional. You have to. That's the key to life. I'm just saying. About economic disparity, time. Time is the most valuable currency. And if you have like a stock, that's like the American dream is the stock. And, you know, during all that time, all that asset, the American dream was appreciating. And you're not allowed to take out business loans. You're not allowed to read. You're not allowed to write. You have to first fight to become three-fifths of a citizen. Then you got Jim Crow. And then you got everything else. It's like you're now having to buy in at a price so high because the time is irreparable. You can't get that back. One black person today cannot in one lifetime achieve what generations of white families were able to do simply because they didn't have to compete with us to do it. Yeah, I, I agree with you totally. Like, Yeah, I was thinking, just like you said, from a historical standpoint, we start with slavery, then that's centuries, generations of stolen labor, like you said, then we get into Jim Crow, which is just an extension of that. Then we have redlining, we have mass incarceration, we have events like the bombing of Tulsa and Rosewood in Florida and all these different things. I feel, I feel like racism is go. that's what's going to call a division. Well, it already has. Okay. And I feel like nobody, like, I don't know if you guys not winning it. Like, are y'all not opening your eyes to it? But literally racism has caused a division in the United States of America. It's like, we're still living in the past and we're not living in the present. First of all, the other guy in the last one, he was just like, oh man, I, I haven't forgiven yet, but I'm willing to do the change, whatever. But I feel like in order to go on in life, we have to forgive what happened in the past because we don't know what our ancestors did at all you know what i'm saying we don't we don't know uh just because i'm black or just because i got black ancestors we don't know what they done did you know what i'm saying we don't we don't even know or feel the true pain of our ancestors for us to be even speaking on how they felt i'm be real i'm gonna be 100 real i live in the present 
You know what I'm saying? I never try to live in the past because what happened in the past happened in the past and I can't change the past. I can't go back to the past and go back to how my ancestors felt and just have so much hate towards white people or whoever was being on my ancestors. You know what I'm saying? So I just don't know. White people don't even know their ancestors, but we hate white people today. You know what I'm saying? And they don't even know the the, the trauma that, uh, that their ancestors done put on black people. They don't even know that. You know what I'm saying? But then you got some white people who, who feel sorry for black people, who want to baby feed black people and treat us like some puppies. You got a lot of white people out there that's like that, but then you got some real white people out there that's like, bro, I don't even know my ancestors, so how can I even vouch for what they done did? I don't know them. Just like I don't know my ancestors. You know what I'm saying? I know that slavery was a very traumatic, uh, traumatic uh, experience, but again, from what I read on, but, from a, but again, I just cannot, like, live in the past i can't say that slavery affected my family you know what i'm saying because it seems like my family is so much better now it's like they're happy they don't even bring up slavery my grandmas they don't bring up slavery great grandmas they don't bring up before they died they wasn't bringing up slavery you know what i'm saying and i'm pretty sure they wasn't telling their kids about the trauma because if they was then that would have brought on they would have you know, they kids would have told they kids and they kids would have told they kids and then boom, next thing you know, now they telling my mom and her sisters and now my mom and them is telling me. So it's like, I feel like it's just like a, you see what I'm saying? It's like a generation thing, you know what I'm saying? But again, my family didn't really speak on racism like that. My great grandmas, they didn't really speak on racism. You know what I'm saying? I have a homie, his grandma, um, his grandma, I, no, did she live? No, she didn't. But she, well, she lived with Martin Luther King. That's, that's kind of crazy. But uh, she don't really speak on what happened in the past. She don't speak on segregation. You know what I'm saying? She don't speak on how white people treated her. She don't. She just live life today. She's happy for where she's at right now. That's all we can be. It's happy that we're here right now and that we don't have to go to different bathrooms. We don't have to do this differently. We don't have to do that differently. I'm glad that I can go into the same building as a white person, apply for the same position as that white person. And most likely it is not no, oh, the white person go get the job. Like, no, it's just like, who has the more conditionals? Who look more professional? Who are, who's more fit for the job? Who has the more degrees? You know what I'm saying? I'm glad that I could be a black firefighter. I'm glad I could be a black police police officer i'm glad i could be so a black ceo i could be a black basketball player a black tennis player a black soccer player i could be whatever i choose to be if i put my mind to it you have to change your mindset you can't keep looking at the past you have to look in the uh, present oh my god i just talked uh oh my bad y'all when it comes to when it comes to these type of topics i get wow you know what i'm saying examples of our wealth being decimated and i don't say that to come from a defeatist or a victim mindset but i think if we just have an honest conversation about history and what we've gone through when we've been here um racism is definitely a big part of that and there are a lot of successful black americans a lot of millionaires a lot of you know business owners but they're exceptions for sure for a reason um and there's a big difference between income and wealth I would like to challenge the ideal that African Americans are lazy or that we don't have a good work ethic. I think there's this perception that, you know, we're here, we're in America, how are we not doing better for ourselves, so. Hey, I, I agree with that. I definitely agree with that. I truly believe that African Americans, they are lazy. They're, they're lazy. Let, let me, look, let me explain something to y'all. It's funny to me how every other race that comes from a different country, you know what I'm saying? You got Africans that come from Africa. You got all these different people. You got Hispanic, Mexican, whatever. You got them that come from Mexico and all these different, they come to America. They have a, they see the opportunity they have. Look at what they do. They go crazy. You know what I'm saying? You got Haitians and all them, bro. They go crazy. And they then one thing I love about them, they get they be hard on their kids to be successful because they like, look, we are in the new lifestyle. We have so much opportunity out here. I'm gonna be hard on y'all in school and y'all gonna be successful. It's crazy to me how us African well, us black people, we it's like we 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 have so much opportunity in America, but we just take it for granted. It's like we don't push our kids to become successful. We teach them about, oh, you can't do this because you're black. You can't do this. But then we don't teach them to go out there, be a CEO of a company. We don't teach them to go out there and start your own business. No offense, but it's like you got other races that come out and they go create A-Rabs and all of them got gas stations, all types of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Making money. But then you got black people who's just lazy and they don't want to push their kids to become successful. Some Black people don't want to push their kids to become successful. Then they teach their kids about all this nonsense and then they buy into the system and then they buy into the Demo uh, Democrats and then they just buy into all that, bro. They buy into all that and they don't see the truth. And then they hold their kids back from seeing the truth. So now their kids grow up to not know the truth and then boom, now we got a freaking world of uh, kids that just think it's okay to steal, kill, and destroy people. Like, just what the devil do? I'm being real. 
I'm gonna keep it real this video. I'm being real, bro. I thought I was gonna be the only one staying. I was gonna be like, oh, I'm about to be like Kanye West, <laughs> but <laughs> okay. There's a lot of things we can use on it as an excuse to hold us back, to not, uh, not to reach our potential. But it's up to us to look past that. You yes. know, like me coming from Africa, I came here to better my life, my family. I'm yes. the only one here. And since I have been here, there's a lot of bad things that happened to me. There's also a lot of good things that happened to me. As African or African American, we need to like look past like racism and like, just focus on our own goal. Like, what do we want to achieve? So we need to stop using the word racism to when we don't get something or when something don't go our way. Exactly. Just keep trying. You know. So let me jump in real quick. No disrespect, but racism exists, and I have to acknowledge it. And I can't just ignore it, but yeah. what I can do is not buy into the system. You know, if I want to do something, let me be the entrepreneur. What I believe happened in the 1960s is that we started looking for equal rights, to be equal with other people. And what we stopped doing, and I heard you talk about Tulsa, we stopped using the black-owned businesses. Now, because you guys got to understand, the Fair Housing Act in 1968, I'm five years old. That's when we could move off the east side of L.A. and move into other subcultures. So what I wanted to do at eight years old was go to IHOP. I didn't want to go to the Ma and Pa restaurant anymore. I wanted to go to, let's go eat at the hotels. So what we did is stop supporting each other and started supporting corporate America. So the racism plays a major part, but we don't have to buy into it. Thank you. I have been. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. She just spoke. Uh, this is what I'm talking about. The man just spoke some common sense. We don't have to buy into the system. That's the problem. And black people, y'all don't realize that y'all y'all own enemies. You have so many white people out there that be trying to, like, honestly speak the real to y'all. Y'all call them racist, racist when they don't say what y'all want to hear. Y'all call them racist. Everybody in my comment section, like, for example, somebody said that I got mostly white followers. Now, not, now I'll say 80% is white. Okay, from just the profile pictures and all that. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? I don't care because I see that the people that subscribe to me knows the truth. But it's also that other half that's black and they see the truth too. They see the truth too. They don't buy into the system. We need to get, we need to look past racism. Yes, racism is this. We can't stop racism. We are racist too. We, but no, I forgot black people can't be racist. No, we are racist too. But we have to look past racism and look at all the opportunities that we have in today's day and age. We have to look at that. You know what I'm saying? We have to, bro. I love what, the, man, I, I love what he just said, bro. I love it. I'm waiting to disagree with you, my brother. <laughs> I mean, I'm waiting patiently. The thing is, even though I want to disagree with you, I get where you're coming from. When I see black people talking about racism, all that stuff, I'll be like, what is wrong with these people? You guys have food, you have EBT, no, all this thing. And you're God. here shouting about somebody is racist too. Just leave that person and move on. I feel that way. Like, why are they always like complaining? But when Black Life Matters started happening, like I sat down, I said, I need to actually know why these people are paying. And if we look at the history, what they've done to them, like if you actually sit down, watch some documentaries, how they were maltreated, how the, I don't think if I'm actually born, I will forgive those people. I don't care. It's easier for us Africans that were raised in Africa to feel like they're complaining because we, we were raised through struggle. Like I barely even have water and you, you have water, you're complaining. But then it's not about the basic necessity or about how we are raised. We are raised like, I don't want to say way better, we might not have resources, but there are some way, like our own um, people will not look down on us or put us behind. So it's in their, they're not sure that way. Like they just can't overlook it. And if you sit down and watch everything that the, the forefathers have been through for you, I changed my mind. No, they need to be angry. However, they should still move forward. I mean, we, we, we have police brutality back home too. True. We have like, if you go to Cameroon and then you see how that police officer treat, like treat us and they're, they're black just like us you're not even gonna believe it, you know? And in Cameroon, we have this, have you, heard, have you guys heard of the word like tribalism? Mm -hmm. So yeah, 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 it happens so, in Africa. Yeah, so, so we do get oppressed too. Mm, and I agree. So when I'm saying like, we need to like look past that, I'm not saying forget what happened to you guys or me, at the end of the day, we cannot just sit and just grieve on the past. We have to be able to move on, but not forget. If I could choose a place to live, it would obviously be my country. I love my country. But right now, 
my country is not the best choice for me. There's a little genocide going on in Cameroon right now. So many innocent lives, lives are being taken. If I was still in my country, the opportunity that I have here, I would not have those opportunities there. Hip-hop reinforces stereotypes about the black community. In South Africa, we have our own version of hip-hop, so we call it Kwaito. So they would rap in our own language in different, we call it Venek, so back home. It kind of did reinforce some stereotypes because now when you go out in the world, people will just classify you under one group. And growing up, also looking at American entertainment, looking at the hip hop that's done here, I'm like, oh well, you're rapping about drugs, you're rapping about this, of course it's gonna happen, of course you're gonna go to jail. But getting older, you see the culture as well of hip hop. I had to understand that there's a culture within that. When I was alive when hip hop started, and it was, it was during a time where people rapped about what they saw, what they wanted, what they wanted in life. And then it became where people rapped about what they had been through, what they had gotten over, you know, used to sell drugs, used to hurt people, but now this is who they are. Um, and I think it's gotten into now, and in our day and age now, it's where people are glorifying and wanting to pretend that these are the things that they do on a daily basis when it's not. So it went from storytelling to now really it's truly storytelling, but it's unhealthy for our culture. I don't want to on my radio and all I'm hearing is, I put a bullet in it, something, something. Like, I'm like, eh? That's what you would do? <laughs> no, like, sorry. And then it's like, it's all about like, talking about female body type, the booty, the thing. Like, don't talk about my booty like that. So I don't want to listen to something that pro portray me as a female that way, or something that is talking about how you put bullets in my head. Like, if you actually do not come to America and see for yourself, you will think that, most African Americans are carrying guns around and they just shoot randomly or they just grab your ass or something like that. That's the way the music portray them. And music is a very important element in our society because it influences a lot of people, both young and adult. And then they kind of see all those stuff and they act like that, even though that's not what they really want to be. They act like that and behave like that. Like if, if all these rappers are your, your role model, then you want to be like them. You want to be cool too. So in the end, it's about like the people that are packaging the music. And sometimes it's about trend. It's what people want to hear. And that's the thing. I feel like every rapper that's like, not every rapper, but a lot of rappers that's in the black community, they all rap about the same thing. It's like nothing is different. You know what I'm saying? But again, this also comes from uh, people, like you said, it's people who, people who seen who seen these things or who want something out of life. But then again, you got to think about the, uh, the household that they was raised up in too. You know what I'm saying? That's why we have to raise our kids to be right. I'm glad that like, I'm, I'm not happy that I came from a single mother, like a single parent household, but I'm glad that my mother had to discipline me enough to really make me see the real. She didn't want me in the street. She didn't want me like my father because she seen how my father ended up. But he wanted me in the streets because he wanted to put it in me to be into the streets. But she had she couldn't do that because I was like her I'm her baby. She was like, no, you can't put my son into the streets. But that's besides the point. I feel like a lot of hip hop it does stereotype black people. You know what I'm saying? It does because a lot of people would think that this is how black people are. But in reality, it's a lot of black people out here that's like me. That you know what I'm saying? I, I never I never witnessed. A uh, gun getting shot off. Okay, well, I heard gunshots before, but I never like seen nobody die in front of my face, like get shot. I never, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I don't uh, like talk about women body parts and talk about how I'm gonna do this to that woman and this and that woman. I try to treat women like a queen. You know what I'm saying? I treat, I treat my fiance like a queen. I treat her like she's supposed to be treated. I don't just look at her body all day and say, well, I'm finna, I'm finna do this to her. I'm finna do that. You know what I'm saying? That's just not the right way to go about things. And that's why a lot of women, they turn the opposite way because of how men treat them. We are supposed to be the protectors and providers. How are we supposed to be protecting and providing for our women when all we're doing is talking about the body parts that they have and we're not even married to these women? So we just putting our dangling in every single woman that we come across, which is not good. You know what I'm saying? That's not good. That's diseases, all types of stuff. You feel me? I'm just, look, speaking facts right now, my guy. You know what I'm saying? The American dream is only for white people. Okay, you did room for that. <laughs> oh, I believe that the American dream is only for white people because it says equal. 
And when we talk about equal, there's no equality between um, the one percent, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Trumps and the people who really run um, the media and things of that nature. So for black people growing up in America and living in America, we could become rich, we could become wealthy, but we are not on the equal playing field of white America, the system of white supremacy, which is in the law enforcement, which is in the uh, judicial system, which is in the prison industrial association, also in the politics. Um, we are not equal in any of those terms. When I was back there, when you were speaking, I, I started thinking like, could we ever actually as black people have the American dream here in America. And I don't, I don't know if we really can being, I'm trying to be careful with my words, but I, I do think there needs to be a, a degree of separatism. Like black people, we really need to have our, our own. Um, to but, but then we fight for equality. Didn't Dr. Martin Luther King had a dream? <laughs> I'm just saying, it wasn't our point or wasn't the points of these black civil right, uh, civil right, I don't even know what to say about that, but uh, just wasn't wasn't the point to be equal with white people. Wasn't the point so we can, you know, go into the same store as white people. We can do this as white people. We can have the same opportunities and jobs as white people. Wasn't that the whole entire moral? Like, wasn't that the, the, the wasn't that the root? Like, wasn't we supposed to get to that point? So how can you say, oh, I feel like black people should just have their own, you know, their own thing. Like, no, you know what I'm saying? I 100% be believe that we're equal. Why? I'm a Christian. I believe in God. And I am a, a true follower of Jesus Christ. And I believe that we're all equal in God's eyes. No matter what you think. If you're atheist, if you're whatever. I don't look. We all equal in God's eyes. You know what I'm saying? That's just the real. You feel me? We all bleed the same. We all equal. I, I'm just keeping it real. We may have difficult physical traits. I mean, different physical traits. We may have different personalities. We may have different things like that going on for ourselves. We may have different color of the skin. You know what I'm saying? I could be black. You can be white, whatever. You could be Hispanic, whatever. We may have different skin types, but that still doesn't separate us because we're all one. You know what I'm saying? We're all one in God's eyes. So I'm just saying. If you're a true believer in God, if you're a true believer in Jesus Christ, you're going to believe that we're just all one under God's eyes. God don't look, he, he God don't look at color. He, he not looking like, oh, you, you black, you're going to hell. Go, go. Nah, you black, you're going to hell. Like we can't, we literally can't control the way that we came out of our mother's JJ. We can't control that. I'm being real. We can't control the color that we are, the skin color that we are. We can't, you know what I'm saying? I can't control that I came out black. You can't control that you came out white. You can't control that you came out this color. We can't control that. So again, we're all equal. Regardless of what anybody, we're all equal. And I truly believe that. But to fully take part in that dream. This is their system. Yeah. Why would we dream of being equal in a system that wasn't designed for us? The American dream, at least. I was on your side, big dog, but bro, I don't even know no more, man. You got some different opinions, but I mean, hey, everybody's entitled to their own opinions, some stuff that I agree with, some stuff I don't agree with, but hey, it is what it is. The way that I define it is, you know, freedom of opportunity, freedom to choose what I, what I want to do, freedom to acquire wealth the same way that anybody else can. Um, obviously, we're fighting the tides of time on that, uh, and and our circumstances, but it's hard because it's, it's hard to honor that, but then also want more for myself. And I think that as black people, we're always teeter-tottering on that line of like, well, am I American? Like, do I get the American dream? Or do I, do we just tear all this shit down and build something new? White people are not the only people entitled to the American dream ever. Yeah. And I think that that's why we're all here because our ancestors made it so that we can stand here and pursue that American dream. Thank I wouldn't have been here if it meant that it was not for everyone. I wouldn't have even entered America, you know, I feel like not just African, but other people as well in different countries. And from what I have seen, I've seen other people, even Africans and African Americans succeeding in their own way. And that's why I feel like, like you said, you can interpret the American dream in a different way, whatever industry or whatever it is that you're focusing on, because there is 
a level of opportunity that you can be successful. You know, talking about Trevor Noah, you know, who took over The Daily Show, it wouldn't have been possible for him coming in as an African. He got his American dream. It made us as well, other Africans, believe that it is possible. The American dream writes his check. So he gets to have wealth or whatever it is that he's experiencing, but the American dream is the one who writes his check, not him. Mm. I agree with you, <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> but do you see how we would put it as he had his American dream, even though someone writes his check, but for him or for some of us looking at it on the other side, it's, that's. And I guarantee his check be more than half our checks. Okay. I'm just saying, look, his check be, <laughs> you feel me for, 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 uh, for like regular people. That's not like, you know what I'm saying? That's not in a big CEO or they just work, you know, regular jobs, like, you know, regular nine to fives. Even if you got a great nine to five, you feel me? I guarantee his check be higher than all our checks. I'm just saying, I'm gonna keep it a buck. Look, I ain't, I ain't rich. You know what I'm saying? I could say that I'm successful for my age or, you know, I'm good for my age, but I'm not, no, you know what I'm saying? I ain't up there with Jay-Z, Beyonce. Like I ain't up there yet. You know what I'm saying? But I'm pretty sure that his check is higher than pretty much all our checks. I'm just saying. It's his American dream because his goal was to get there. The biggest cultural shock I saw coming here was definitely the lifestyle because the lifestyle I saw of America, especially Los Angeles, was portrayed as a very rich lifestyle. And of course, I came here as a, school, as a student and coming here, living here and seeing the reality of it, seeing different homeless people, disadvantaged people, was really a cultural shock for me because I didn't expect to see that. And I guess also the way people were handling each other because coming in as an African, I thought people were together. But since being here, I saw that there was a huge divide, or there is still a huge divide within the African-American community themselves. If he had stayed in, uh, in South Africa, would he have had the same opportunity that he had here? No. No. Like, you know, so corporate is writing his check, but like us growing up, the reason we move here is because we don't have it better back home. Like, me, sure. like for me, I'm the first person ever in my family in America. Everybody else is back home. Everybody's depending on me. Like all of them, my mom, she's dying to come here. Like, she's willing to do anything just for her to be in America. So for me, when I look at those like little things, I'm like, yeah, American dream is for everybody, you know? Like, yeah, we might not have the same opportunity as the white people, but there's still that little chance that a lot of us back home are willing to take just to get here. I trust law enforcement. <laughs> I don't have a thing to say. All right, can the disagreeer step forward? That's great. Since y'all don't trust law enforcement, how about y'all go out there and live y'all own life and let's not let, let's take the police and let's take all that out of there and let's see how we end up surviving. I just I'm just curious. So when somebody do something to you, somebody break your break break your uh break your window and breaking your house and steal all your stuff and steal your car and do all this crazy stuff and nonsense, I wonder who y'all go call. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm just curious. I'm seriously just curious. But I'm ready to see their uh their little point of views on this. I got married to a young lady who did 15 years in prison for a robbery she didn't commit. I myself was incarcerated for six months for a burglary that I couldn't have committed because I was in prison. So in 1987, I'm doing um, 19 months in prison. When I came home in 1988, I was given a burglary charge and I had to sit six months. And the judge did not kick it out because there's no way I could have done it. He kicked it out because they didn't serve me the warrant while I was in prison. So I, I don't trust them. They lie and they do things and, and it affects our people. So many people I know who have been wrongfully arrested, wrongfully convicted, and they actually lie on the stand. So there's no trust. As you guys know, I am from Richmond, Virginia. It was the capital of the Confederate. Uh, I have been brutally abused by the police there. Like personally, I was at the river on the 4th of July. I don't smoke, I don't do none of that. The police come and arrest me because I look like a drug dealer. Like they like arrested me. What? The yeah, I, then uh, when I was in high school, my senior year, my father went to jail over a car accident. A oh. car accident and I was left alone at 17 years old. I was grateful uh, one of my teachers took me in and like raised me. 
I, 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 I try to stay away from the police as much as possible. First of all, they're human beings, and I, I think that just because you put a badge on doesn't that doesn't magically bewitch you with like integrity and um, a desire to actually help the people around you. I think a lot of times, police culture comes from police families. It comes from like legacy lines and this whole like kind of like culture about stuff. I mean, I don't trust them any more than I would trust any other person. They haven't earned that necessarily, especially. I get what everybody's saying, and my whole take on it is, I'm gonna get my ticket then. I'm gonna get my ticket then. I'm gonna, let, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm sorry. I'm a, I know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Keep pausing. I'm sorry. Not as an institution in its purest form. I think it's necessary, but um, they have a lot of living up to that to do and to make up for if they're gonna be. Uh, trusted. I've seen law enforcement here on social media and seeing how they treat people of color, you know, from like hitting them. I mean, George Floyd, you know, rest in peace. But just seeing that from my experience being here, I was scared, you know, like every time I'd see a cop cop pass by, I'm like, okay, I better make sure I'm driving okay, you know, because I don't want to be stopped or make sure you're not in any harm's way, you know, but it's sad to feel that, to feel that pressure every time you see a cop going by. And even if they trying to help, but I wouldn't even want that help because of what I've been seeing on social media, you know, and also seeing the case of people being wrongfully, you know, um, I'm sorry, I gotta stop right there. First of all, you listen to the words you just said. I couldn't trust them even if they was trying to help because of things I see on social media. You can put that in so many different ways. You know what I'm saying? Would you, uh, so if social media tells you, like, what? You know, you see nothing but terrible relationships or you see, no, 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 I'm not even gonna say that example. I'm not gonna say that example. That's a terrible example. Forget that analogy. That was terrible. Okay, I don't even know where I was going with that. But my whole thing is, how can you not trust law enforcement because of things you see on social media? You know what I'm saying? Social media? This, this is people's problem. This is this generation problem. This is what y'all depend on. Y'all depend on y'all phones for everything. Y'all depend on y'all y'all social media for everything. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, everything. Bro, I don't have no Facebook. I don't have no Snapchat. And the only thing I use Twitter for is libs of TikTok. That's how I kind of find out my reactions and stuff. I don't be on Twitter. Instagram, I use Instagram for one thing and one thing only. It's to stay in touch with you guys, to read you guys' DMs, to see all the support that I get, to text you guys back. And if you look at my following, all you see is I follow nothing but Christian content, and I may follow like a couple uh, right-wing people, you know what I'm saying, uh, that's on the right. So I, uh, that's all you will really see, to see the dumb stuff that, dem uh, that Democrats put into y'all brains. I, I love seeing that. It's funny, but it's sad at the same time. So y'all depend on social media for everything. So if a cop came up to you and he's trying to help you and you want the help because of what you see on social media, that, that, that's, that's just mind-blowing to me. How 2022, how we allow technology to really change the entire game. I'm being real. I'm 19 and dog. I cannot just depend on my phone for literally everything. Like social media, bro, they put things on social media and they only show you a portion of what really happened. That's what y'all fail to realize. Things that happened with George Floyd, things that happened with all these different other people that got uh, murdered or that got uh, uh, brutally abused by the police. They only put out what they want y'all to see. That's it. They only put out what they want y'all to see. Bro, it's a lot of white people out there who got abused by police too, but we don't never see that. I wonder why. Why we never see that? Why we never see the the uh, Hispanics and all of them? Why we never see them get uh, abused by the police? We only see really black people get abused by the police, and I wonder why. That's my thing, bro. They put out what they want y'all to see. They they just trying to bring what they y'all. You just say you're not gonna buy into the system, but literally you buy into well not her him, but still you buy into the system by uh, looking at social media and even watching the news. They put out what they want y'all to see. They don't put out the full thing. You know what I'm saying? They, they only put out what they want y'all to see, bro. They want you to see a black person get beat on, they go put that out there. They want to see you uh, see a black person get killed, they, they go put that out there. They put out what they want y'all to see, bro. Y'all got to understand that. You can't depend on social media for, for real life situation. I'm sorry. You just can't. I understand that social media is real life, but again... Like, obviously, things that happen in real life go on social media. That's what I'm saying. But, again, you can't just depend on social media, bro. I can't depend on social media. I'm sorry. Taken to prison, that's, like, unfair. Like, what type of research are you doing before you arrest people? And I immediately thought about the history of the police, too, just tracing that back to slave patrols, which mm -hmm. became our modern-day police departments. And Oh, the fact that, like, if you have a felony, you can't vote. Like, that, to me, is, like, talk about the loss of the American dream. Like, you should, you are a citizen of this country. You should always have a right to vote. We are obsessed with race in America.
I think that word obsess is such an interesting word, and I think that the way that that question is framed is almost as if it's like the onus is on us, like we're obsessed with race too much. Like, no, white people are obsessed with race in this country. They've made their laws based on it. They've cast us out because of it. They've like destroyed entire groups of people because of it. So, I mean, we're just living in the ripple effects of the stones that were cast in the pond of history. So we're just reacting to it. So we would rather just be human beings and American citizens and you know, people that are pursuing an American dream. We'd rather not have to think about race, but that we did not draw first blood on that. What else do you expect? Yeah, like, I mean, history, I'm not like, obsessed. Uh, yeah, For me, being in America, give me an opportunity to, like, meet and, like, discover so many different cultures that I would uh, never see if I was in my country. I would just, like, maybe hear about it on the news. Yes, I agree. I think they are very obsessed with race. Yeah. Even when you do, like, an easy application, like, it doesn't matter what application you do. They, they want to know your race. They want to know, you know, why they don't have a category for Africans? Exactly. You know? That's why I'm checking out everything. Yeah, like, yeah. they, they, they want to know everything. The thing that pissed me off the most is that when they see you, and they'll be like, oh, you have an accent. Where are you from? Like, who cares where I'm from? Just sell me this thing and let me keep going. And then when you told them that you're African, they'll be like, what country? Yeah, they, they, they're so obsessed with where you're from. She's like Wakanda. Like, <laughs> I don't believe that there is an obsession about race in America. I believe that race is a distraction to hide the power, the wealth, and the access to it. So a lot of times there's something put on the table like a rock being thrown and I hold my hand and that's the racism between black and whites, between blacks and Hispanic and other cultures have come here. We'll talk about race just so that we don't have access to the power and the wealth and I think it's done on purpose. There's a, a power that allows us to talk about race if we don't look past it. Some of the question prompts that I see differently and then when I hear somebody say it, I'm like, hmm, that actually makes sense coming from their perspective. So it's been really beautiful having this conversation with you guys. You guys are very knowledgeable and I've learned a whole lot from each and every one of you today. Going into this with like the title of the series, like African versus African American, I think that like, People were gonna come in thinking that we were gonna be like guns blazing, but this is such a beautiful display of unity. I, I love it. It like gave me so much life today. Okay, all right, all right. When I uh, when they talk about being obsessed with race in America, I I get both sides. Honestly, I believe that we are obsessed with race. Why? Because, bro, like I didn't even think about it, but every time you you know you fill out an application, anything they need to know your race. Are you black? You know, whatever they need to know your race. You know what I'm saying? But then also, race is a distraction. You know what I'm saying? We we so focused on race that we miss the great opportunities that we have because we so focused on the race of something. We so focused on racism. We so focused on all them type of things that we miss a lot of different things in life. You know, a lot of different things in America. We miss it because we're so focused on just race. You feel me? But um, y'all let me know what y'all think about this video. I think this video is very, very entertaining. Very interesting uh, interesting too. So here are two different perspectives. We got African-Americans and then we got actual Africans from Africa. It, it's kind of crazy. Like we we hearing two different perspectives. But y'all let me know what y'all think about this in the comment section below. I love each and every one of y'all, man. God bless. Stay blessed. Peace.